Hey, you want a biscuit? No. I want the blood of my enemies and their heads on a pike. Just the one, then? Yes. <laughs> Who's ready for some live music? And who's ready for some dead music? My family have never been able to settle for long. Our habitats are vast, dense forests. But the humans keep knocking them down, leaving us nowhere to live. This is the story of the Headlice family. It had been a long, snowy winter. Until, finally, our host had bought some Head and Shoulders shampoo. Oh, You kids, you'd wish every day was dandruff day if you could. Our village had settled, and we are ready to get on with the year ahead. But then, the unthinkable. What's that? We need to move. Everybody. Now. Our host had gone to the barbers. <laughs> Two back and sides. Our forest was decimated. Thankfully, I'd spotted a young schoolboy waiting for his haircut. His young untethered scalp promised us the home and resources we'd need. All we'd have to do is cling onto the barber's comb and wait for his turn. Uh, I can't hold on much longer! Just hold on tight, my darling knit. Ah! Mommy! The only question was, would we make it? Find out after some more slightly less riveting comedy from the Biscuit Barrel. Mr. McAllister, we have a warrant for your arrest. On what charge? On the charge of... being a big meanie. What? What? That's ridiculous! And that's exactly what a big meanie would say. You can't arrest me based on that! Well, I'm sorry, Mr. McAllister. If the warrant was for a little meanie, maybe I'd reconsider. But alas, no. Is that really all it says? Oh, I'm sure you wish it was, don't you? But no, the hole just goes deeper. Oh, do enlighten me. I will. You, Mr. McAllister, are under arrest on suspicion of four counts of pushing in on the slide, eight counts of conspiring to not finish your broccoli, and 22 counts of Saying a naughty word. This is bullshit. Twenty-three! Take him away! Right, come on in. No! It's not fair! Broccoli bastard. So, what are your views on deforestation? I mean, you know, it has its pros and cons. I mean, I spent my entire life in the rainforest and look at me now. I'm a dinner table. And this is Drawing with Niall on Radio 6, the first art show to ever be broadcast on radio. Now, first, I'm going to start drawing some lines, and you can phone in and guess what I'm drawing, based on these first simple shapes. So I'll just start off with a squiggle here, and a bit there. Ah, we've got a guess on line one. Hello, Alex from South London. Hi there. Uh First off, love the idea, it's uh, very quaint, but I just wanted to point out that the listeners can't actually see what you're... Thank you, Alex. And at this point in the show, we always like to emphasise that all art is in the imagination. Hmm. Morning. Morning. Got your shopping delivery. Oh, great. Now, I'm afraid we do have a few substitutions today. Oh, no worries. It happens, doesn't it? 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so firstly, we've completely run out of bread in stock. So instead, we got you... <laughs> the body of Christ! Oh, wait, what? Jesus! That's the one! Now, next up, we're completely out of boxed wine. So instead, you've got... Wait, no, what's that for? The blood oh! of Christ as well! <laughs> Kinda comes hand in hand with the body. You've got him open. I know, right? What else? Uh, what else? Uh, what else? Uh, I think we're okay. No hot cross buns! I knew it was something. And that's why we brought you... The Cross! Good job, this isn't on a radio show! <laughs> Massive! some extra hummus! And now that's all done, have we got some time to talk about our Lord and Saviour God and the Holy Spirit? Oh, you've got them on the van too? Things have been a little different since the Catholic Church acquired Tesco. Tell us, Mr Chicken, why did you cross the road? Well, to be honest, once I escaped, after seeing thousands of my force bred siblings blended into chicken nuggets and drumsticks, well, I initially didn't want to get to the other side. But then I was greeted by a Samaritan who really unlocked <coughs> Oh, balls. Sorry I was hungry. Well, this interview certainly had some nutritional value. Every day. 230 million of our forests are destroyed. Welcome back to the headline story. We'd set up camp on the young child's head. Having lost our dear daughter Janet on our crossing, we proceeded to make 40 new eggs over the next two days. Whoa, that's a lot. Is that like in your nature? Oh no, it's just a religious thing. <laughs> <laughs> what religion's that? Baldism? <laughs> well, that's just offensive. Balding heads provide us no habitat and kill millions of us every year. Sorry. We're Catholics. And they just took over Tesco, so don't fuck with this nit. But, anyway, we made passionate, hairy, twelve-legged love into the ginger night. And twelve sunrises later, we'd produced a full force of young, expendable children. But we knew our time was limited. As soon as the boy got into school the next morning, we had to start lobbing our new loved ones onto every barnet we could get our nets on. Darling, my arms are getting sore. Hang in there, my love. Just a few more babies to throw at these children's heads. Then came the words we never wanted to hear. Class 8008135. After lunch, everyone's to queue outside the nurse's office. Don't ask questions about the class number. Turned out that it was the wrong day to throw babies. Queue up, children. This won't take long. We had no idea how we'd survive. All we could do was stand there and listen to the quiet sound of our babies melting. <laughs> Our quirky little tale shall continue in a bit. We are monks in monastery, still sad about our celibacy. Whoa, that was a really good ding, mate. Absolute mega ding from the dingmeister over here. Borderline criminal ding. Glad you enjoyed that ding, fellas. Buddy, that ding was crisp. You're one talented dingman, lad. Governor should have you on the dings all the time, mate. Who right, I'll pray to it. Our father, who art in dinging, hello be by ding dong. Thy will be done, my friends. They got me on the ding all week. Oh, give us this ding, our daily ding. Absolute scenes from the dinking of Monktown. You know what? You guys are the absolute best. Think we're a bit late, aren't we? Does it matter? Look, it's not our fault they got a shit venue. Absolute bloody pigsty, eh? Too right. They should have booked earlier. To be fair, they didn't know when the baby was coming along. Now, oh, come on. 
way I see it, if you're thinking, I'm almost due, but I better go all the way to Bethlehem on a shitting mule just to get the Atmos going, then if anything, you deserve a bloody stable. Hello. Oh, uh, hello there, mate. We're here for the, uh, you know, the baby. Baby? That's right. A very special baby. Oh, that one. Yeah, he's gone. Gone? Yeah, 6th of January now, fellas. It's all over. Over? Yeah, mate. Christmas was two weeks ago. Well, we didn't know. It hasn't happened before. Yeah, and you still got your decorations up. Oh, yeah, the massive star-shaped one. Be mean to take that down. Honestly, this is what we get for coming all this way to meet this woman who we don't even know and give our newborn kids some gold and a couple of nice fragrances? Why bother? Well, we've heard this baby's meant to be a pretty big deal. You're telling me. It's been an absolute bloody nightmare. As soon as that little mock came out, there was an absolute bloody infant massacre around here. It was really messed up. Hey, well, we heard this kid was supposed to be a bit of a miracle. If you call the worst atrocity to ever happen to this village a miracle, then sure, knock yourselves out. As far as I'm concerned, if every Christmas is going to be like this, then there's no place for children. Just one entitled brat's glorified birthday that gets them all killed. Good night. Well, I guess we could give these presents to each other. Ah oh, yes, great idea. But we don't have any wrapping paper. Ah, not to worry. We'll just use my socks. Mmm, perfect. And that was the first giving of Christmas. Someone call for an ambulance? Yes, it's Paul. They've hit their head really badly. Okay, where are they? Just through here. Paul, someone's here to see you. Paul? Paul! Oh! What if in Jack and the Beanstalk, yeah, the magic beans were just Viagra and the Beanstalk was just the Earth's giant fucking boner? I've seen this before. Are they concussed? No, it's much worse and uh, there's no cure. What? What is it? They're woke. So there's nothing we can do? No. They'll never be truly self-aware again. They'll just think they are. We should go. Okay. Bye, Paul. Remember to keep it real. I will, Paul. I will. Well, you know, you, you win some and you lose some. But, General, so many of your men are dead. Well, I know, and, and while that is a shame, but, um, if you look at the bigger picture, there are seven billion people who are not dead. So, hooray! Hooray! Meanwhile, on the surface of Mars. The humans are coming back! Quick, everyone hide! Why are we hiding? If the humans find signs of life, they'll try and settle here. And we don't want their species here. They bring nothing but destruction! We have a problem. What? In all the panic, James spilled his bottle of water on the surface before hiding. Didn't you? Shit. They're gonna think there's water here now. Good going. Sorry. Every day. Approximately one million school nurses avoid prosecution for the murder of billions of unborn infants. Welcome back to the conclusion of the headline story. As we watched the beast near our nest, we knew we had to act fast. Next, please. We're going to have to jump. And so we did. We fell for ages. The fall was so long you could have sworn it was autumn. That's just a little joke, but I... Nonetheless, soon we found ourselves in a strange, poorly kept vine-laden jungle. Where are we? I don't know. Is that a machete? Don't be daft. Remember our proportionate size? Must have snapped off a razor blade or something. Hmm. That would still be comparatively larger than a species of our... I don't know, darling. It's a sharp thing and it's very useful, considering this thick vine jungle we now find ourselves in. 
Oh, this is no jungle. Who are you? My name is Crabius Lausius Smith. Welcome to my pubic sovereign. Pubic? That is right. You have reached the depths of the nether regions. Our settlement is at the base of the great pink volcano. And that mountain is? Yes, yes it is. But do not worry. The force of the lava flow is so great that it always jettisons right into space. Jeez. Anyway, you are more than welcome to take refuge in my quarters in this beautiful landscape. The host is young, and having spent three months with him, it will be at least seven years before anything disturbs us down here. Ah, perfect. And that's our story. So next time you scratch your head and think, Hey, what can I do to help the head lice? Remember that you can start by just not scratching your head. To us, that is a huge scale catastrophe that will take many lives. Thank you for your time. Boycott Head and Shoulders. If you like the episode, follow the series on Spotify, Apple Music and Buzzsprout. This episode was written by James Horscroft with Alex Denley Spencer and starring them, Capriola Hooper, Daryl Reader, Zoe Quarter with Thomas House. Also follow us at Instagram, Facebook and Twitter.